Hey y'all. Hey, so my name's Kate and I am telling you this information because I think that it's going to be beneficial down the line to somebody. Um, so uh, in another video I'll tell you about why um, I can tell you this, but mostly it's because this came to me, this information came to me at a time where I really needed to hear the information and it made enough sense for me to write it down and then I thought I'd record it and then I thought well maybe I'll share it with somebody to see if it helps them. So there's a couple of messages that I want to get across and one of them is about um, provision and provision from the universe or from God or from the great creator source. Okay. The second one is about fulfillment of your provision and the third one is about the timing of your provision. Okay. So the first thing I want to say is about provision itself. And that is that if you look at the grand scheme of things, of everything in the world, from the smallest amoebas and bacteria to the largest, you know, elephants and whales and dinosaurs and the biggest, biggest things on the earth that live, right? They all are provided for. They all have community. They all have shelter. They all have um, food. They all have everything that they need. Um, unless it's deprived by them, but they have everything that they need um, to live, right? Because the great creator source provides for everything and for everybody. And so if the great creator source provides for everything from bacterias and cockroaches and mice and rats, all the way up, cats and dogs and people, uh, all the way up, why would you think that, he, that the great creator source, whatever that is, would not provide for us, right? Because in truth, the great creator source, as I understand it, is all about expansion. If you take out the, um, if you take out the religion out of it, I mean, and you look at the spiritual science and the religion and you take it all in, I guess what I'm saying is take it all into consideration, that you understand that the greater source of all that is, is ever creating, is an ever creating source. And so provisional, um, so provision is the front edge fractal of this ongoing uh, multiplicitous um, ex uh, experience of creation, right? So provision is the natural front edge finest fractal, if you don't know what a fractal is, look it up, in this ever-expanding universe. So provision is the desire for something and its fulfillment is what makes the universe reach out to create a new thing and therefore expand. It reaches out, it create, it reaches out, it fulfills it, it expands as the fulfillment. Then it reaches out again, it, fulfill, it fulfills it, and as that fulfillment, it expands, right? So provision is a natural law of the universe. Hold on, I gotta rub my nose. Provision is a natural law of the universe. So as a natural law of the universe, it's the leading edge front fractal. So provision is always there. It's man, mankind, who took themselves out of the ever expanding provision of the universe and started to believe in money and other men instead of believing in the natural provision of the universe. So what I'm saying is, with regard to provision, you provide yourself not necessarily by the sweat of your brow, but you provide for yourself by your imagining and creation. By imagination, creation is how you provide for yourself. So if you look at what's possible, it's imagination creation because imagination precedes everything, right? My friend's son said, and he's like 10, he said, what would the world be without human thought? Which was pretty deep for a 10 year old. And if you take it back without human thought, nothing exists because in the beginning was the word, right? In order to, to utter a word, you had to have what first? Thought, right? So thought preceded everything. And without human thought, there is no creation as we know it. So imagination creation is how we're supposed to provide for ourselves, is to have a hearty and vivid imagination. And you notice how they've steered you away from being imaginative by providing toys that already provide a narrative and a scenario. They don't allow you, like Legos provides a, a narr provides an imagination playground. You know, Bratz dolls provide a 
um, uh, a, 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 essentially a script and a scenario because there's a limited amount of things you can do with that type of toy, right? So imagination creation is how you create. You first imagine what it is that you want and you revel in that experience of having it. And it is through that revelation and the more time that you spend in the future creation, in reverie, the less creative energy is in the existence where you are right now. Got it? So the more that you pull your creative energy away from where you are, and you put it into your desired outcome via daydreaming or thoughts or going to the store and saying, oh, this would be a great thing for my house or this would be a great piece of furniture for my new house. The more you put into the cre your creative energy into the future creation, the more you pull it out of the current creation, the less structure the current creation has energetically to exist. And so it follows that the new creation that you are paying attention to exists, right? kind of give you an example a friend of mine sent me this thing that says two wolves are fighting in within you and the question is which wolf will win and the answer is the wolf you feed whether it's the wolf of negativity and fear and doubt or whether it's the wolf of love and positivity and belief and empathy and sympathy and compassion it, you you'll the wolf that you feed will win right similarly in your mind the creation that you feed will win okay so prosperity is always occurring prosperity will all i'm not prosperity provision is always occurring provision will always occur and provision occurs in spite of your knowing about it because if you were one of the few people that put their existence on the line and so a lot of people don't have a choice to put their existence on the line to trust and believe that god is going to provide for them only then do you actually have the experience that provision is real and it does not come from the sweat of your brow it comes from the beauty and the bouquet of your imagination so that's what i want to say about provision right off hand and i'm sure i'll have something else to say on that in a minute but this is the gist of it right so provision is always occurring Provision will always occur. Provision is the front finest fractal of the ever-expanding universe, providing for you, providing for amoebas, providing for whales and dinosaurs. Provision is always occurring. You just have to listen for it, right? There's that. The next thing I want to talk about is fulfillment, right? And so you go, this is my thought. Does God want what I want? That's the question, right? In other words, I know that I want um, a relationship. I want a loving relationship and a big house on a lot of land. You know, um, I want to have a lot of money that I can live comfortably and spend and do whatever I want and enough money to invest in people and invest in ideas and, and help move the world along in a positive way, right? So that's, that's, um, that's my, my desire, right? That's my, my desire. So fulfillment is always occurring, right? Fulfillment has to occur just like provision has to occur. And so what do you, what do I mean by that? That means that, that provision is the activity of filling your desire and uh, provision is the activity of recognizing that your desire will be fulfilled. And then fulfillment of your desire is the actual fulfillment of it. And does God want what you want? Well, yeah, God wants what you want because God doesn't care what you want. It doesn't matter what it is, good or bad. God wants whatever that you, whatever it is that you want. The universe has no opinion, is not going to offer you, you know, anything other than fulfillment of your desire. So fulfillment is always happening because, are you ready for this? Fulfillment of your provision is a step in the fulfillment of someone else's provision. Do you follow me? In other words, it doesn't end with you and it didn't begin with you. So in, in my world, one of the things that I want to do is do an online magazine, right? About spirituality. Well, provision of that opportunity for me also provides provision for the opportunity for people to be a photographer or to be a uh, contributing writer or to put their product out there do you see so provision is always occurring and because provision is always occurring fulfillment is always occurring right so in the process of fulfilling your provision 
it's a step on providing someone else's fulfillment as well, right? So I thought that was pretty interesting. Lastly, I want to talk about um, timing. Timing, God's timing, right? So I had to think about this for a minute because I was wondering, you know, how's this going to work out because God is in the non-physical or the universe is in the non-physical and I get provision and thank you for fulfillment and I'm grateful all the way around. But how is this going to work out in time for me to do what I need to do, right? And that is live, right? So I had this thought. I had to kind of work it out. And I had this thought. So the great creator source of what, however, whoever, whatever that is, the great creator source, the all that is, is the emanation and the source of everything that exists on our end, right? On their end, on the source's end, it's the explosion, and on our end is the dust. Do you see what I mean? In other words, what immediately precedes an, an explosion itself is the dust before the explosion occurs, right? So look at a slow motion picture, you'll see what I mean. So timing, God created everything, or the universe, great creator source created everything. So the timing is created by the source, and so if it's original, then it's perfect, right? It's the original one, then that's the standard by which everything goes, goes by. And God is perfect, so the original concept of space and time is a concept in perfection, right? So we know that. So God is perfect. God created time and space um, as a multiverse, and we know that time and space are perfect as they exist, right? So the thing with God's timing is perfect because God created timing, and God sees the ultimate plan, or the great creator sees the ultimate plan for all the things that need to come together to come together. So since God created time and space, and God created you and knew your desire in advance, God's timing is perfect. Why is God's timing perfect? Because it's never too early and it's never too late. It's always perfect timing. Do you see? Anyway, my name's Kate Mullen and I've been having a rather unusual, I think unusual and pretty unique life experience with the supernatural and the spiritual, the physical and the non-physical. And I'm going to share it with you in these series of YouTube videos. And I hope you learn something about the unusual nature of our reality. And it starts you thinking um, in new and different ways. Anyway, I'm Kate Mullen. Bye for now.